quick question now to Bali. You talked to Barry Grossman, lawyer and peace activist, about the uh, senior figures who have condemned efforts Where's to obstruct. The sound? Okay. Um, Barry Grossman, do you have us? Barry Grossman? There's no sound. Yes. Okay. Yes. Barry Grossman, do you have us? Yes. Great. Okay. Uh, uh, the fact that you have senior figures condemning the efforts by the ICC is the topic. Um, and tell us what you think about uh, whether the ICC is ultimately going to be successful in pursuing its investigation against Israel. Well, look, I mean, these are two quite separate and both very uh, uh, difficult issues. Uh, uh, so let's deal with them one by one and unpack it. <coughs> In terms of interference with the process of the ICC, I think there's a, a really no channel through which any complaint about that uh, uh, can be expected to be taken seriously, certainly not through the ICC itself. Uh, because what we have to bear in mind, of course, is that the United States has never submitted to the jurisdiction of the ICC. And uh, uh, certainly the occupation itself, otherwise known as Israel, uh, uh, argues, contests that it too is not really subject to uh, the jurisdiction of the ICC. So there's no channel there on the face of it to complain about something amounting to an attempt to interfere with their processes. I think the, the response has to be a political one in the court of public opinion. And there can be no doubt uh, that already for a number of years, uh, there's been no end to the threats made by both Israel and the United States to the very existence of the ICC, to individuals working on the investigation of uh, Israeli war crimes, uh, and, uh, and so on. In fact, uh, it was made very clear that they would be lobbying all of their allies who are subject to the jurisdiction of the ICC to withdraw funding, and that uh, uh, they felt, that is both Israel and the United States, that they'd be able to shut it down. And of course, it's the only real forum out there. Uh, to enforce uh, uh, international law against defending parties. So it's not surprising that uh, they want to uh, shut it down and that they maintain they're not subject to its jurisdiction, even though the United States certainly has no qualms about subjecting other nations to prosecution through the ICC if necessary, or through its pet uh, 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 court uh, with the United Nations. As for the investigation into Israel, uh, it has to be borne in mind that this is a very complicated uh, uh, legal area. Even the question of jurisdiction in part depends on whether it can be said, uh, whether it can be argued coherently, that the occupation itself has investigated uh, 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 alleged crimes and dealt with them in a judicial matter, so that uh, uh, if it has, there'd be no basis on which to take it to the ICC. Uh, I think many people, many viewers are perfectly aware that that's a spurious argument. Uh, we all sit in hope that the ICC uh, will come to its conclusion, seize itself of the matter, and proceed to have a full-blown determination on uh, Israeli guilt with uh, appropriate penalties. But again, we'll run up against the problem that nothing that the ICC can impose by way of sanction is particularly easily enforced. So ultimately, even that determination falls into the court of public opinion to have any uh, uh, real effect. Uh, personally, I think there'll be a measure of success. But what we're seeing everywhere, really, is that any uh, investigation into the occupation's uh, crimes ends up uh, uh, being watered down and turned into a similar investigation into alleged crimes by uh, Hamas and other organizations uh, uh, within Palestine. And of course, that's rather unfortunate because it tends to lose uh, uh, sight of a few realities, including the fact that the order in which things happen is as important as what happens. And ultimately, when you have a heavily armed nation like, uh, like the occupation uh, Israel, I say nation uh, decidedly rather than state, uh, uh, you know, it's very difficult to defend yourself against them. And certainly what Hamas has done, and people are sometimes critical of it, I, I don't see any issue at all uh, with, for example, the rockets that are sometimes fired in the mortars from Gaza, bearing in mind that since the beginning of time, only about 40 or so people 
have been killed by rockets and mortars fired from Gaza. That's since the beginning of time. And most of those people that have been killed uh, on the part of the occupation are IDF soldiers. And uh, the, 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 the sending of these rockets, the launching took place during major, uh, and I would argue illegal, Israeli military operations on Gaza. So, you know, this tactic, uh, even strategy, if you like, about trying to turn the table and threaten Hamas and uh, make Hamas out to be the bad guy, I don't think can really go anywhere. And the ICC will be perfectly well equipped if there's a, a willingness uh, to see the difference. Uh, so we live in hope that the ICC investigation will produce a result, even if ultimately the sanctions imposed won't be readily enforceable. As for attempts by the United States, Israel, and for that matter, countries like the UK to hinder the process, uh, in, in, by taking action, which in many ways is tantamount to a contempt of court in other jurisdictions. There's really nowhere to go, in my opinion, with such complaints. There's no uh, judicial venue where they can be taken, heard, uh, proven, and an appropriate response given. So uh, those are really political matters, and, and there's no room for any doubt. Uh, the United States, certainly Israel, and to a lesser extent, uh, uh, the UK have repeatedly stated their willingness uh, to do whatever it's necessary to shut the ICC down and take action against individuals uh, that are involved in this process of investigating uh, Israeli war crimes against Palestine. I don't know if you recall back in, um, I think it was uh, 2005, was it, uh, when Zippy Livni, uh, during a trip to London, was summoned by uh, the British police there. Uh, for the war crimes that happened uh, that was cited for the Operation Cast Lead. Um, and, of course, that was a big deal, and Israel said uh, that it was ridiculous that this happened, and uh, nothing came of it. Uh, but uh, it did give uh, somewhat of hope that, you know, maybe Israeli officials who uh, are involved in these war uh, adventures, especially with the Gaza Strip, uh, that uh, maybe they can be prosecuted. Uh, do, do you think that this time around, if something comes out of the ICC in terms of its uh, findings that uh, attribute war crimes to Israeli officials, that uh, perhaps the same can happen to them? Well, ultimately, it depends on, on, on who's in power in the country that seeks to take punitive action as a result of a determination by the ICC that war crimes were committed. I mean, if we, if we look at uh, that example that you mentioned, uh, what we've seen happen over and over again with countries like the United Kingdom is there are investigations into uh, conduct which is illegal uh, internationally uh, that are started, and they get shut down. Uh, for example, some people might remember that there was a very serious uh, investigation into corruption in the supply of uh, 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 from British aerospace of planes and whatnot to the Saudi regime. Uh, huge amounts of bribes that were paid, and that investigation started. Uh, in part at the request of the United States, but other parties as well. The investigation started. It seemed a, a pretty open and shut case. And then uh, the government of the United Kingdom uh, shut it down for national security reasons. They just shut it down, uh, even though on the face of it, there was clearly a major violation of uh, domestic criminal law and indeed the United Kingdom's international obligations on, uh, on, on bribery to foreign public officials. Uh, uh, the same thing, of course, happens with uh, uh, war crimes alleged against uh, uh, the occupation. Ultimately, it's important to remember that governments are comprised of people. In the United States, something like one in six people are civil servants. And um, they, they come from all different walks of life. They're your brothers and your parents and your neighbors and your uncles. And within all of those people, it's not one completely homogeneous block. There are people who use their authority to try and move in the right direction, but ultimately they're all accountable to those okay. above them. There's political interference and they get shut down. So it ultimately depends on who's, uh, it, what party is in control of the government and what willingness they have to see that justice is done. Indeed. Thank you very much for that, Barry Grossman, a lawyer and peace activist from Bali.